All right, guys, welcome back to the Everything Calls World podcast. Today we're going to be looking at the CFB semifinal, the Orange Bowl, number two, Michigan. They will match up with number three, Georgia, on New Year's Eve, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. This one's on ESPN in Miami at Hard Rock Stadium. Georgia, seven and a half point favorites, over under is set at 43 and a half. Michigan offense has been great this year running the ball. You know, it's the nation's top offensive line, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, the play backs it up, too. Andrew Stuber, Andrew Vistardis, so they're the leaders up there. They have the fewest tackles for a loss allowed in college football by a pretty wide margin. Uh, you know, second is Oregon State with 13 more than them. And, of course, you know, Michigan played an extra game. They're fresh off 200-plus yard games against Iowa and Ohio State. Uh, they're also second fewest in sacks. These guys have been phenomenal this year. It's been the backbone of their entire football team. Hassan Haskins, Blake Corum, uh, you know, he looked healthy on that 67, I think it was a 67-yard run against Iowa. Um, he didn't play a lot against Michigan. Uh, he still has a great, quick cut, nice burst. Hassan Haskins is more of the runner that feasts through the in- interior with the tackles, but um, two great running backs for Michigan. That's a phenomenal duo. These guys have been doing it all year long, and um, they should win the Joe Moore Award for the nation's top offensive line. I think they got pretty good balance for uh, the style of offense they come out with. Cade McNamara can really air it out. Uh, Roman Wilson, Cornelius Johnson, Eric Law at tight end. They're both six foot, six foot three or taller, so they got some good size. Uh, they don't have great size with depth. Um, they, have, they have other guys. It's kind of by committee at receiver. Guys like guys like Dalen Baldwin, Adriel Anthony. They got some pretty reliable pass catchers. Cornelius Johnson, though, he's the leader of that bunch all as well. I think he's probably the second best pass catcher on the team. I think the balance they've had though overall this year, it's been pretty solid. Josh Gaddis has been very creative. You've seen it against Iowa. Uh, Donovan Edwards had a 70 yard passing touchdown. So they've had a great showing the last two weeks all year long though. They've had pretty good balance against the best defenses they've played all year. Um, You know, they didn't run the ball too well against Wisconsin on the road or um, versus Penn State also on the road. So they were able to really kind of, uh, play a complete game in those against those opponents. Uh, they were able to throw the ball very well against both of those opponents, so they've shown it's in their system. Their defense has also helped them out a lot with field position. So, you know, we're accustomed to seeing Michigan's passing attack being no good. It's just very b- below average. That's kind of been, his, uh, in history, it's kind of been that for Michigan. It's not very good, but this year it's completely different. McNamara, very efficient, he's very effective. They get a lot of big plays downfield. Um, will, will they have any here against Georgia? But no, probably not. But that's a they're not stagnant whatsoever. I think they have pretty good balance for this offense. Of course, it's going to start up front. They're playing a great defensive line, though. So they're going to have to win their matchup up front. But Michigan overall, I like this offense. The Bulldog offense, Stanton Bennett, he's been a above average game manager. That's how I put it this year. I thought he played pretty well against Bama, 340 yards. And of course, they were down in the second half. He was throwing a lot. Um, I still don't think you can win a national championship with him. I think JT Daniels is going to be going to have to be out there. That's if Georgia is one-dimensional. Ben, it's not very good when it's a one-dimensional offense. Again, I thought he played pretty well against Bama. He did have those two interceptions, one in the red zone, another one was a pick six. So he had some mistakes that really costed him. But he also threw a lot of very nice balls. So um, I'm not a massive believer in Bennett, but he's much better than he was last year. So credit is due there. Uh, you know, they've been running the ball very well this season. They could not really get it going against Bama, even though they nearly ripped off a couple of runs in that first quarter. Um, White or Cook or, you know, whoever got tripped up. Kendall Milton had a nice run. Or I think it was McIntosh. Regardless, Milton, McIntosh, White, Cook, they have a great group of running backs. James Cook getting him out wide to create mismatches. That's the best part of their – that's a big part of their offense, that is. Um, you know, putting him out wide all the way to the – in all the way out to the boundary – getting him on safeties and linebackers. They win those matchups a lot. Um, you know, just drawing the attention as well. Uh, Cook, they need to get him involved a lot. I think finding some misdirection, that's when Michigan can really get lost in some man coverage. You, uh, you look at the Nebraska game, they had a big problem with that. But the misdirection they created caused them issues. So, um, George, I think they need to get a little bit of creative on offense. You look at Brock Bowers, this guy is phenomenal. At tight end, he'll be playing on Sundays. Very good vertically. He's a speedster, too. He's very. They have a respectable downfield passing game, and it starts with Bowers. He's their leading pass catcher as a freshman. Phenomenal ball player. Uh, this offensive line, they've been really great. They're right behind Michigan in 
fewest sacks allowed. They've been very good in pass protection. That left side of Salaire and Justin Schaefer. All around, it's a pretty big offensive line. It starts with the left side, though. Uh, these guys seal off the edge pretty well. They don't seal it off as good as Michigan does, but they do a pretty good job of uh, blocking on the interior. Blocking on the interior. The pass protection, I think they've been overall pretty phenomenal this season. Uh, they couldn't really run the ball like they wanted to against Bama, though. Another tough matchup here. Uh, they're just not very good when they're one-dimensional. Uh, I just this, I don't think that's the situation they need to put Bennett in. So they need to be able to get back to running the ball, winning in the trenches. George Pickens, he was back. He had a big jump ball. He won against Bama. He should be a full go in this game. Played only he played. He's played a couple of snaps against GT and Bama. He'll have about you know three weeks to get ready for this game. Lad McCotney, he's got that speed. He's another one of those former walk-on guys. Barely recruited out of high school. He's a phenomenal ball player for them. I like what he does. Especially on the screens. You had that one against Bama where he took it to the house. They're very good at blocking in space when these get, they get these big athletic linemen out there. So, big part of their offense. Jermaine Burton, Karis Jackson. They got some very good pass catchers. By, kind of by committee for the Bulldogs as well. It's kind of like that for Michigan too. So, by committee for the Bulldogs. I think they got some good talent. Darrell Washington, 6'7". He's pretty big. He, got, he had a red zone touchdown. I think they need to start using him a little bit more, not just in the red zone. Overall, the Georgia offense, they didn't have a pretty showing against Alabama. They had 400-plus yards, but they were fighting back from behind. And um, I think I think Bennett was much better than t anticipated, but I would like to see him get back to running the ball and not have him throw you know, 40-plus times in the game. Well, you know, the Michigan defense, this is an elite pass rush. They come to the Orange Bowl with Aiden Hutchinson. He'll probably be in New York for a Heisman invitation. David Ajabo, you guys both have double-figure sacks. Uh, you know, Josh Ross, a linebacker, extraordinarily big part of their run defense. Uh, you know, they struggled against Kenneth Walker, the tackle and whatnot. Uh, you know, they weren't great against Nebraska. But overall, this defense has come a long way. They're doing much better against the run than last year. You know, they had a game against Wisconsin where they allowed almost 400 yards running last year. They've come a long way. Um, the secondary as well, under Mike McDonald, they've played a lot more zone coverage, and that's really benefited all parties. I think they're going to have to try and um, – I don't. I think they're going to be zone heavy in this game. I don't think they have to play a whole lot of man. The nickel, nickel package they provide though is pretty good. Daxton Hill he can be versatile. He's a phenomenal playmaker for them. Top ten in FBS in opponent completion rating allowed. I like Vincent Gray and uh, DJ Turner. Very good corners. And I just mentioned Hill and you know Brad Hawkins as well. This great safety duo. This defense all around. They've grown so much together. They're veterans on here. Some of these seniors really playing hard. You know. They've allowed 100-plus rushing and almost 10 games this year. You know, the defense, none over 200, so they're not dominant against the run, but they're not great either. Um, they got burned by Walker, as I just mentioned. They couldn't tackle, but overall, the penetration's been good, and I think they've kind of shored up those issues they had against Michigan State. The size they have on the defensive line, Chris Hinton, uh, Donovan Jeter, Mozzie Smith, I like what they bring to the table, and they have those phenomenal edge rushers as well. That's going to be the tone setter in this game. What can they do to slow down the run? This secondary doesn't give up a whole lot of big plays. Um, you look how they did against Ohio State. They held up very well against the Buckeyes. That's a great receiving core, the nation's best. And um, they didn't allow big plays. They kept everything in front of them. Of course, those guys had their numbers. They wouldn't fight back, and they wouldn't back down. Those uh, you know, Buckeyes are incredibly resilient on offense. They've shown that over the years, especially this year. In two of the games they lost, they're really fighting back. The receivers are highly impressive. But they kept everything in front of them for the most part. They're not going to be. They're not going to have to be very stressed out here against Georgia's pass catchers. I don't think George Pickens. He might. Um, I expect him to play a big role in the Orange Bowl. But um, outside of him, I don't see. Outside of him and Bowers, I don't think the secondary is going to be incredibly stressed because they've defended the middle of the field pretty well. Other than the Nebraska game, um, I like what they've been able to do. They're not playing Ohio State again. Where Jackson Smith and Najiba on the interior, he kind of. Inside the numbers, he kind of had his way with them, but Georgia doesn't really possess that same threat. The defensive line for Georgia is elite, though. You know, they have great sizes with Jalen Carter, Devontae Wyatt. You got Jordan Davis, who didn't have a great game against Bama. He's a two-down player. You know, Bama was dropping back. They are moving with a little bit of tempo. He was just not effective. I was very fearful for how the secondary would play if, their offensive line, uh, if an opposing offensive line neutralized their defensive line, and they got absolutely torched. It was very, uh, it was very kind of embarrassing to watch. Um, Jameson Williams could not be contained. They had 400 plus passing yards. They could not slow him down. You know that was the biggest question mark for me because they've not been put in many positions like that all year long. How would they react to to one? And they didn't react very good at all. Um, 
I do think they will bounce back. They're playing a more of a run-oriented team here, Jordan Davis specifically. These guys are great at stopping the run. This is the third year in a row they're going to be first or second in run defense. Only a handful of runs of 20-plus yards allowed all year. They need, do need to find some pressure, though. The pass rush was pretty absentee, Adam Anderson being out. I thought they'd be better than they were. But, um, you know, Chance Tindall was a guy who stepped up with three sacks against Tennessee. Robert Beal, Trevon Walker. They got plenty of talent, but, um, you know, not having Anderson there in the SEC title game was a big loss for them. He won't be back, I don't anticipate, for the rest of the year. They only had four tackles for losses, a unit against Alabama, an offensive line that, for the most part, has not been really good this year, been very inconsistent. They had a backup center. They allowed double-figure tackles for loss to Auburn. Um, the best part of their defense didn't show up in the SEC title game. I think they'll have a bounce back game here, though, against a team that, you know, you know, stylistically they kind of match up with very well. Tempo did hurt them. You're not going to really see Michigan run off a whole lot of tempo. They could. They did against Ohio State. But um, it's not the same comparable. It's not the same as Bama airing it out, going deep with Jamison Williams. Airing it out, going deep with Jamison Williams. Michigan, they're very capable in their own right, though. They got some big plays in the passing game, the running game as well. They, they get a variety of big plays. I think this is going to be more of a defensive game. I think Georgia will bounce back Dan Lanning's and have some things for them. Uh, they can hopefully slow down the Michigan running game, but the secondary will have to be better because Michigan, they're capable, so they, that's a matchup to watch as well. Should be a very fun matchup in the trenches. Team comparisons, quarterbacks and running backs. Okay, McNamara, I'm going to give him the edge. I think he's played very well, efficient and effective. He's not been turning the ball over. The Michigan offense, they don't turn the ball over as a whole. Uh, running backs, it's not really a debate. Hassan Haskins, Blake Corum, he hasn't been great all year long. Pass catchers, I'm going to give Georgia the edge here. I like Brock Bowers. He's a phenomenal tight end. It's kind of by committee for both of them. Michigan, they have some better size with Wilson and Cornelius Johnson, Eric All. He's a really good tight end too, but um, he doesn't have the same skill set as Bowers. Very impactful for his own football team though. Offensive line, they're both very strong up front, but Michigan, that's been the bread and butter all year for them is their ability to protect against opposing pass rushes and the create space, seal off the edge. This offensive line has been very, very good this year. And Georgia, I'm going to give them the edge on the defensive line. Uh, the pass rush for Michigan is great. I think on the interior, Georgia is, you know, much better. Michigan's not a slouch, but with the Bulldogs possessed with size, skill, they get the edge there. I'm going to give them the edge of linebacker as well. And the Kobe Dean's phenomenal. Uh, Josh Ross, he's a very good ball player in his own right. But, um, both of these teams are all kind of they're all kind of even in all the categories. Secondary Michigan, they just played Ohio State a couple weeks ago, kept everything in front of them. Georgia just played Alabama, they got absolutely dominated. So that secondary still kind of on their heels a bit. They have plenty of talent though. Lewis Sign, Chris Smith, Keeley Ringo, they got very good ball players. But Michigan right now, their secondary has evolved so much, and uh, you know the two of the top passing attacks all year. Very different outcomes for the certain teams. So. Michigan gets the edge in the secondary. Looking at the keys to the game, I think Georgia defense needs to get back on track, get back to its nature in the trenches of being physical and nasty, slowing down the run, creating negative plays. For Michigan, they got to slow down the run in their own right, allow the pass rush to create opportunities. You know, set up Georgia for long second and third down passing situations. That's going to allow Hutchinson and Ajabo to tee off. And I think that's what's going to happen. Georgia, I think they're going to be pretty one-dimensional. I think JT Daniels, you'll probably eventually see him in this game. Because Stenson, he's a good... Good quarterback whenever they can run the ball, but when they can't, I don't really trust him to win me many games. I think it's pass rush. They're going to have opportunities to make plays, and they will. I think they're going to force a turnover or two. I think Jordan Davis, he's going to have a big bounce back game. I think they're going to slow down the run a good bit, but I do think Michigan, they're going to find their way to around 150 yards. They're going to stay ahead of the chains for most of the afternoon. K. McNamara is going to make some important plays. Um, you know, because Georgia, they just played – you know, a pretty shaky offensive line, and they weren't able to do much. Now they're playing the nation's best offensive line. I do think they'll bounce back, but by how much? That's going to be a big question mark. Um, I do think I do want to point out how Michigan could not run the ball. This was back on in October, though, the beginning of October. They couldn't run the ball against Wisconsin, who's right behind Georgia. Um, they're very comparable in terms of run defense, but I do think they're going to run for 150 yards, and a few turnovers will be the key. 20 to 17, Michigan is the pick. I think it's going to be a uh, you know, a close defensive battle for 60 minutes. It should be a very fun game. But um, I'm going to take the Wolverines and Jim Harbaugh to punch their ticket to Indy.